Welcome back to uh, the four o'clock session at the Visual Media Conference, studying sustainability through innovation. I'm delighted to be able to welcome our next speaker, Rob Sinderman, who is as the Senior Director for Retail, who is going to take us behind the scenes into revealing how sustainability is genuinely at the forefront of their print packaging, and I think more importantly, the customer experience. The work he's been doing at Middleton has been described by the Environmental Investigation Agency as a, a real vision for a shopping experience that reduces plastic packaging, protects the planet, whilst demonstrating that checking out on plastic doesn't have to come with a hefty price tag. So that's a tall order, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about how you are approaching that, Rob. Uh, it may well be a double act today because we've already heard from Ralph, uh, Ralph is a Burmese mountain dog that's with Rob at the moment, and he does occasionally chirp in, so don't be surprised. My, my other call out is to Rob Shaw, the chief exec at Creative Race, who facilitated this session and introduced me to Rob to be able to bring him into the visual media conference. So three Robs together. I'm not quite sure what the collective noun is for that, but don't send any suggestions in. Uh, in the meantime, let me introduce Rob Sinderman. Take it away, Rob. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, hello, everyone. And thank you for having me. I'm Rob Sinderman, and I'm as this Senior Director of Design. So um, let me start by giving a quick overview of who ASDA are, because not there might be some people from abroad who don't know. But um, we are pretty huge. So we're the UK's second or third largest supermarket, depending on which way the trade winds are blowing. And we service millions of customers across the UK every week through our stores and online, across food and groceries, general merchandise, which is kettles and toasters and duvets and stationery, and, and our fashion brand, George, which is the second largest clothing brand in the country, only behind Primark. And a huge chunk of what we sell is own brand um, products. So, um, but we also sell a lot of major house, uh, household names as well. So as you can imagine, this is a huge, huge operation with mind boggling logistics behind it. And we are very conscious that we have an impact on the wider world. So um, just a bit about me, I'm from a creative agency background. And when I started at Asda three and a half years ago, I was their first ever design director. So um, my job as senior director of design is to look after how the brand shows up visually across all channels from advertising to campaign graphics and packaging design to CRM, that is to say emails, as this website, social channels and our in-store point of sale. And the design team uh, has grown to about 55 people by now with, with us doing a lot more work in-house than we used to. and in 2018 we launched our uh, own in-house studio called studio 368 uh, 368 is out the pantone color uh, that we use and um yeah so so it's a lot of work we do and the studio now looks after all our print artworking press ads out of home data activation design asda.com and we've just uh, in-housed motion and content design for social and emails as well so that, it's it's a pretty uh, broad remit, um, and I mentioned it already, but we also do our own brand packaging in our team. And uh, at any given time, as a, as a business, stocks over six thousand own brand products in our store, and keeping those products looking fresh and credible and attractive next to the brands is an ongoing, uh, never-ending job for us. And the product packaging is often where any new government regulation will manifest itself. So for instance, last year, we redesigned our entire own brand kids cereal range to remove cartoon characters. And that was done in anticipation of changes in the law around advertising high fat sugar and salt products to children. And that's about to come into effect. But we also did it because it was the right thing to do. So we use that moment to reformulate the recipes of the products at the same time and reduce all the bad stuff going into uh, to the products by a lot. And 
from a design point of view, uh, it gave us a great excuse to come up uh, with some amazing work with typography instead of cartoon crocodiles and design a product that is appealing to customers um, to persuade them towards, uh, you know, just nudge them in the direction of buying our own brand product instead of a name brand and save a bit of money in the process and not feel like they're missing out by having chosen our uh, the own brand version. So that's um, an example in packaging design where, uh, where where the design is really integral to 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 as they're wanting to do the right thing and bringing customers along with this. And as a business, we obviously have an ESG program. So um, ours is called Creating Change for Better. And we split it into four pillars. So uh, better lives, better communities, better planet, and better business. So better lives is all about tackling the barriers to health and happiness that stand in the way of people getting the most out of life. So we've, you know, an example of that would be that we've removed 518 tons of sugar and 11 billion calories from our own brand products. And um, another thing would be that during COVID, we offered up all our 238 in-store pharmacies uh, to the government so they, uh, to help out with the vaccine rollout. Um, better communities um, is... Um, where we offer people opportunities and support at a local level, which built a much stronger uh, community. So we have community champions and under those pillars, you'll uh, find things like our, um, uh, our efforts against food poverty. So I always find the right hand ad there uh, really powerful and harrowing. And, it, uh, and, I, and I'm really proud of all the good work that we do in this area. So, uh, you know, we're, as we're delivering 120 meals by the end of this year, and we're really supporting people who who need it most in in, in our communities. And then uh, our tickle pink breast cancer awareness work falls under this pillar as well, and it's something that the colleagues in store, especially, really get behind every year. And through uh, and through their efforts, we've managed to raise 71 million pounds over the last 25 years. So that. That's something that's massive for us and a really big part of how we see ourselves as as, as people and as a business then uh better planet i'll skip over the better planet pillow just this second because it's the main topic the topic of the presentation today so i'll just um jump straight to the fourth pillar and better business is about us wanting to be an upstanding member of the business community so this pillar covers issues like diversity and inclusion, um, fighting against modern slavery, supplier relationships. So uh, for instance, during the pandemic, we instituted a policy of paying smaller supplies immediately to avoid, to avoid them getting into financial peril. And we gave all the small businesses renting space in our stores a rent-free quarter and that sort of thing. So as you can see, we're, we're, we're trying to do good in the world. Oh, sorry, I skipped forward too fast. And um, and we're trying to do good in the world because it's what our customers want us to do. It's what we as colleagues want to do. And it's because it's what our customers want us to do, it's also what our shareholders and our owners want us to do. So our customers could very well go elsewhere if shopping with us would mean compromising their values. But it's hard and, uh, and it's harder for our customers than most, because they're a very diverse group representing all of society, but we do an over-index on low-income households. So some 65% of our customers say they would be willing to change the way they shop to be more environmentally friendly and healthy. However, it's not always easy for people to follow through on their intentions when they reach the supermarket shelves and their budget only stretches so far. So we want to help bridge that gap between intention and action by removing some of the barriers around affordability and choice and availability. Um, the behavioral economics theory of nudging was popularized in this book by Richard Thaler and uh, Cass Sunstein. And Richard Thaler won the Nobel Prize for, uh, in economics for it in 2017. And it's informing the work that we're doing in encouraging sustainable options and shopping behaviors in our customers. So nudges uh, are in this context are relatively small interventions that preserve the freedom of choice, but 
just gently steer people towards um, uh, your intended direction. So a type of nudge would uh, be giving people the right information at the right time or changing their physical environments, such as the ones I'll show you in this um, trial store. And um, these are things where design can play a huge role in driving behavior. So a famous and slightly gross example of nudging is from a Dutch airport that printed a little picture of a fly in its urinals, which nudged one half of the population to make a lot less mess in their airport toilets than they usually tended to do. And there are tons of little design tweaks that can change people's behaviors for better without making any radical or costly changes. So some simple stickers might encourage people to take the steps instead of an escalator and adding a bit of fun might uh, stop littering. Easy solutions. And one of my favorite packaging design projects at ASDO was the launch of our new plant-based range. Uh, I think it was last year or the year before. And by, by making this healthier choice a credible option, by making it look tasty and eye-catching and beautiful, it became an instantly viable alternative to people who are open to trying something different and healthier without feeling like they've compromised and gone for something boring and worthy. And we recently redesigned our free from range as well and invested six million pounds into the products. And the key here is around inclusivity. And you can see in the top right corner where it says, uh, why pay more on a shelf barker? And that's because we've pledged that no one should be, uh, pay more or compromise on taste just because they have to or decide to buy an allergen free product. And in that spirit, a sustainable option that is less impactful on, on the environment shouldn't cost more either and should be a credible, uh, desirable alternative. As a business, we launched our first ESG report this year and it lays out everything we're doing to be a force for good as we're serving our customers and the community. And that was actually a bit of a mammoth design project internally and we learned a lot from that, but that's a side note. And um, Better Planet, the fourth pillar of our creating change for better framework, if I return to that, it's all about how we aim to protect and conserve the world around us through sustainable practices and initiatives. Because good deeds around food banks or cancer fundraising feel really actionable and they have a visible local impact where you know you're making a difference to, to the world and to your community and people you see, but lots of the large societal, na national, global problems are absolutely huge and, and none more so than climate change and environmental problems. And on an individual level, it feels really overwhelming. But, but we as a business and as a large, very large business interact with and service millions of people every week. And that gives us a responsibility to do our bit that the products that customers buy in our store are as sustainable as possible. So ready meal trays used to be a massive source of plastic waste. We were the first supermarket to ditch the non-recyclable black plastic trays in favor of a recyclable solution. And it's less elegant than black from a purist design aesthetic point of view, but it was 100% the right thing to do. And it was quickly followed by our competitors to become the, the industry standard. And uh, another example from the packaging world is that we took our steaks out of black trays and instead reduced the packaging down to a piece of card and recyclable film with the graphics doing the heavy lifting at, on making the product look, attract, look attractive and desirable rather than the box doing the work. And this is another example where it's really the graphics doing all the heavy lifting, not, not the actual uh, physical product. And um, and those uh, those examples are some of the things we have done, and there's some more on screen now, which I won't dwell on, but an important pledge of ours is to make it affordable, affordable for customers to shop sustainably through the greener and as the price promise, which is to say you have a viable greener alternative that won't cost more than the standard product. And a way for us to trial all the different ways of doing this and learn about 
the real life logistics of it and see how our cu customers embrace it or not uh, was the decision uh, drove the decision to launch a sustainability trial store so um so we decided to put one on the doorstep of head office and um in leeds middleton and it's it's right on the doorstep of our head office which is a very savvy way to engage uh, senior stakeholders in our business and we wanted to trial things like refill zones and recycling opportunities and and it was all driven by a real test and learn approach so we're working with customers to understand what works for them and we're taking st uh, steps to help them make sustainable shopping uh, as accessible as possible so everything we did there was a first with new ways of working and learnings, lots of failures and successes, but that was the whole point of it. And finding ways that uh, drive sustainability and are also feasible and are actual practical and can be rolled out, scalable, that's what we wanted to do. But we needed all this to be brought to life. So we turned to our longstanding and trusted agency partners, Creative Race, to help us come up with the best way of bringing this trial store and our sustainability messages to life. And uh, after a few rounds of iterations, we landed on the creative concept and headline of let's cut out waste. So there's a lot of rationale to this. So let us is a very collaborative as then our customers are coming together to make a difference. Cut out is urgent, impactful. It, literally cuts through and it's a colloquial way of saying let's reduce and um, and it's accessible and short which is always nice for a designer and then waste was a really good word to have as a common enemy because it's emotive and direct and it's and it's open-ended as well it's not uh, limiting us to a category or anything like that so by promising to cut out waste that's a very useful shorthand for all the uh, unthinking and damaging practices that harm envi uh, the environment and our society and yeah it just uh, sums it up really nicely but it's still looking quite corporate because it's just using our corporate font and there's nothing playful about it so we took the very literal creative approach of cutting things out and we also have a brand asset, uh, which is an angle that we use a lot in uh, everything we do, which comes straight from our logo. It's the Asda angle. So we decided to cut the angle out as well. And that way we ended up with some uh, a very nice type treatment that would lend itself to some very eye-catching and um, ownable headline treatments. And we could formalize that and uh, had a really nice tool to work with. And then in terms of what we wanted to say, um, let's cut out was a very useful um, creative uh, construct in terms of having stretch for the future, where you can append anything to uh, that specific message to make it um, to make it well to make it more specific rather than general. And in, but in terms of design, it's a really useful construct that you can build on even further because when you cut things out, you can look through them. And that gives us a really useful, flexible, creative vehicle to add texture and tell a visual story and make the abstract tactile and real. So we had, um, so this is our, uh, our lockup and then you can add all sorts of textures to it to help tell your story. And it's working really flexibly and beautifully while still being consistent. And that's where you want to be. So this this was basically our key visual for uh, how to brand the trial store specifically, but also all our sustainability efforts in general. And in terms of photography, you can go macro and global and abstract, dealing with the really big problems. And then on the, at the shelf edge or wherever you want to talk about it, you can go micro and into the detail and talk tangibly about local products and the products that are right in front of you or in your hand and then something that i'm always very keen on is to land on something witty rather than purely functional and worthy because um 
on screen right now. That's a this book is a design classic that I would recommend to anyone working in the creative fields. It's it's a gold mine of really wise words. And um the the gist of it is basically that if you engage someone by being interesting or unexpected and and then charming, you stand a much higher chance of them wanting to spend a bit of time with your message and be influenced by it. And it's something I always strive uh, for in our work. So these are just some examples from the past. And that witty tone of voice can uh, that we introduce then in these examples, along with the graphics, can make a serious, very worthy subject relatable and interesting and add some personality that is then projected onto us as a brand. And here's some more examples. So. The, uh, there's a product story that's being told. It's very specific, but at the same time, it's engaging and it has a, a jovial tone of voice and it's not overwhelming. It makes it really tangible what you can do to, uh, to make a more sustainable choice. And you can see the flex of it. But the, so, so yeah, so that, that was the messaging construct. And then the way it came to life in the real store. So a lot of these pictures were taken at an ungodly hour in the morning, which is why they're quite dark, but it was all installed before the customers arrived. So this is uh, the out store, uh, outside of the store at the time of the launch. Um, and yeah, and this is the front of store where we have a big sustainability message and we landed a lot of press on this. And then there are different areas of the store where all this messaging is brought to life and people can try out different things. So there's um, loose fruit and uh, fruit and produce, which is very popular, obviously. obviously. Yeah. And you can see the messaging and the cutout lettering uh, following you th uh, through the whole store and really calling out where you can make a more sustainable option. I was, I was hesitant to put in the left-hand picture here because the implementation in terms of kit is terrible. It's not meant to wobble like that, but you get uh, you get the point where it's it's uh, all about highlighting the sustainable choices you can make. Where you're not paying more and you're not you're not getting less for your money. It's it's just about making uh, making this a sustainable option. So on the right hand side, you can see that the pots can be recycled in store. So even if, uh, so. You know, there's nothing to stop you from making the, the sounder choice there. And then, um, oh yeah, let's make these videos play. And then we uh, we have lots of digital screens in store as well. Um, and these particular ones are calling about the piece de resistance on all the, the um, sustainability store efforts. And that is what everyone gets really excited about. And that's the refill area, which has really caught um, the imagination. So this is the refill zone at launch. It's actually grown uh, by quite a lot of bays since then. So uh, you've got um, the cereal and, and tea and coffee and uh, flour and all sorts of things there. And as along with some really useful infographics, helping you every step of the way to demystify it and to make sure that no one is, um, you know, that everyone knows exactly how to go about it, that they're not daunted by it and buy it. Some nice four stickers telling the same story. And I am aware of the irony of us filling the store with POS to tell a sustainability story, but we, we've we gone for sustainable recyclable materials. And it is something that we'll probably cut down on as people get used to it and know what to do. But um, this was for a launch moment where we really had to tell the story. And then if you've forgotten your tub, you, uh, you can buy, uh, buy them in store and there are loads of options there. So you can see we've got um, really good partnerships with credible brands and it just makes uh, the whole thing a really credible experience. So um, I'll get to some of the learnings at the end, but uh, I'll preview one of them, which is this one for um, cereal, for instance. The prices were really off-putting to people because we, uh, ask the customer to make a lot of mental maths here and to figure out that they weren't actually paying more, it, but it's the price per kilogram that is a bit confusing there. So you can't really compare it to a, a box uh, of cereal that you're buying so uh, easily anyway. So that's something that we definitely need to learn from. And 
just hot off the press. This launched yesterday up in Scotland. Um, and uh, the innovation to address the problem I just mentioned here is that, say, the pasta refill zone is right in the middle of the normal packaged pasta zone. So people can make the straight swap without any extra effort or without having to make a mental note that actually I should be going to that aisle to get the refill version of it. And that makes it a lot easier. And I'm sure that will resonate better with customers. This one really caught everyone's imagination in the press and social. Um, I'm not, I, I think I'm too foreign to understand it, but um, it, it, it was a big hit, this one. And then there are lots of obvious products that really lend themselves to refill zones, like uh, cleaning products and everything. So we've got some really good partnerships with Unilever and their catalog of brands, and that's what, uh, going really well. And you can see the, um, just the refill options all throughout the store. And um, yeah, and it, it's, it's really accessible and simple that way. We've also got a really good partnership with Coke, who've got a bottle return scheme. So you buy a one liter glass bottle in store, and then you, um, when you return it, you get uh, money off your next shop. So, so that's something that's worked out really well. And then finally, uh, George as well, our fashion brand, uh, George for Good was uh, is something that's been going for a couple of years already, but it's it's something that is landing really well in Middleton as well, where we're telling a really good story about how we're using recycled materials for duvets and that sort of thing. And you can return your coat hangers, and there's a, a vintage uh, upcycling area where you can buy pre-loved vintage um, vintage fashion. And then, yeah, and this is the duvet area. And then finally, at checkout, you will um, you'll want a bag. So we recently redesigned all our bags. And again, it's it's in the spirit of the nudge in that by making the bags look really good, uh, if I say so myself, they they become desirable, and people are more likely to pick them up and pay a little bit extra to have a bag they can use again and again, and won't be embarrassed to schlep around town. So, yes, uh, so some some headlines on what we've learned. So anecdotal evidence suggests that um, there's still some barriers to customer participation. So some uh, with the dispensed products, a lot of people don't know how the cost versus the packaged version. They're nervous about making a mistake and spilling. And, um, and we need to be better also at communicating the progress we're making and the trial. So, so, you know, X tons of plastic saved, that sort of thing. And that's something that we really want to dial up in future. So that's something we need to get better at. Um, but the launch announcement on uh, in social media was the highest engagement we've ever had on a Facebook post, even more so than some of the COVID announcements that followed recently, 96% of customer sentiment in store is positive. 96% of that's incredible. And the best selling brands in our refill zone are growing five times faster than they are in the rest of the estate. So it's clearly a brand accelerator if the proposition is right. So um, we've since launched refill sections in four more stores and we're planning to roll them out further. And across packaging and POS and any other area we're working in now, sustainability is always the first question that people ask. So if we can avoid it on food, we don't put plastic windows in there anymore. If if it can be avoided in point of sale, we don't use glitter or PVC. And that's just made, uh, it's really instilled a culture change in the business. So it's it's a great thing to see. And um, hopefully more much more will come of it as we learn, um, as we learn and go along. So, so yeah. That's it for me. Well, thank you, Robert. I can only think of one word to describe that, which is masterclass. That oh, thank you. Comprehensive, persuasive, joined up thinking that I've ever seen. And the fact that it's on my doorstep, I'm happy to admit you've had the necessary effect. You have nudged me and my family in the direction of where you want us to go. Oh, uh, glad to hear it. Uh, the nudging idea, the 180 degrees, I think if I picked up a few highlights, this idea of a, of a genuine intention and it, uh, 
to move from intention to action. I thought that was a very, very powerful way of describing things. And the way that you've done your pricing and you've got the packed and the unpacked alongside each other, absolutely fantastic. I, we've got some questions, but we're running out of time. So I'd just like to ask one to you, which is from David Rogers. Uh, Mr. Sinderman, hope you're well. Oh. Is all the POS signage in the Middleton store non-PVC? And was there a significant print cost increase in switching point of sale signage from foam PVC plastics to a more environmental recyclable alternative? I would say um, not all of it is uh, is sustainable because there are campaign elements, say our Christmas campaign or Halloween or that sort of thing, which will come through in you know a non Middleton specific way. But all our car park banners are. Uh, sustainable now we're avoiding pvc and we're avoiding all the little plastic clips wherever we can and that sort of thing and um as far as i'm aware uh, i don't think the price has actually gone up because we've we've uh the print team which sits un under me as well that they, they've worked really hard with our suppliers to make sure that there's a viable alternative and because we can uh then commit to buying at scale um we normally get a pretty good deal there so uh, yeah, it's it's not cost more. It's taken a bit more effort to learn how to do it, but now we know. And whenever we can, we cut back on any unsustainable materials. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for an excellent presentation. I think we should all be inspired. Um, I'm taken with the notion of the partnerships and the collaboration that you've got with those credible brands. Uh, I said at the beginning, joined up thinking par excellence so i'm grateful to you for your time for your willingness to share some of that thinking and genuinely going behind the scenes and thank you again to rob shaw at uh, creative race for suggesting this session in the first place we'll keep in touch and if any other questions come in we'll get in touch with you um, the pack will be available we've recorded the session thank you very much thank you very much rob Bye bye thank you